GSF Weekly. I'm Courtney Ponce. Week 8 was loaded with big games and we have killer highlights coming your way. Plus, a cow showdown with Oregon at Levi Stadium. And Stanford is back at the farm. Cardinal rolled past the Oregon State Beavers 38 to 14. Stanford had 438 total yards to 221 for OSU and limited the Beavers to 12 yards on the ground. Let's just say the party in the backfield was real. Here's a quick glimpse of the Justin Lum report. The world is crashing down around us and that's fine for people outside of our locker room. In our locker room it's not. We're in the middle of a football season. There are going to be highs and lows. And the good teams are the ones that bounce back from losses, bounce back from tough games. Uh, they anticipate really good games coming up and they prepare and they go out and play their best. A wise man once said, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. Check this out. Stanford is now 10-0 following a loss under Shaw. That's just Stanford football. We hate losing. We, we talk about handling adversity all the time. And a loss is an adversity. And we always talk about just getting back to the process, focusing on the process and just doing our job. The defense harassed Beavers quarterback Sean Mannion, sacking him six times as he completed just 46% of his passes. You can watch the full report on GetSportsFocus.com. Quack, quack. Jared Goff and the Golden Bears could not keep up with the Oregon Ducks last Friday night, resulting in a 59-41 loss at Levi Stadium. Oregon turned three consecutive Cal turnovers into 17 of their 59 points. And it was a great homecoming victory for former Valley Christian Warrior Byron Marshall. Our very own Emily Campagno caught up with the Warboys alumni after the win. Byron, first of all, welcome back. How does it feel to be playing not only in your hometown, but in Levi's Stadium? Uh, no, it's a great feeling, for real. I've never been here before, so to come here for the first time and get a win is great. And to be back home, it feels right. And are your family in the stands cheering you on tonight? Yeah, I've probably got like 20 people up there just cheering, so I'm excited to go see them after this. So tell me, how did that 54-yard catch feel? It felt good. I somehow ended up wide open on that and Marcus seen me, so all I had to do was just catch it and go score. And all of your hometown fans want to know, what are your future plans? What's ahead for you right now? Ahead is just the next game, for real, just keep playing. Um, I don't really look into that future that much. I'm just worried about what's going on right now. Well, listen, you played an incredible game. We're all fans. Welcome home. Thank you so much. And speaking of the War Boys, they went to war against St. Francis and won in double overtime. Kirk Johnson may be out due to injury, but younger brother Colin Johnson stepped it up big time against the Lancers with two touchdowns, including VC's first overtime score. And senior quarterback Michael Machado wasn't worried about nothing, sinking two overtime touchdowns to Colin Johnson and Matthew Fagoni to lead VC to victory 21-14. The Sierra Padres squared off against the Reardon Crusaders for the ninth annual John Baxter Trophy game. The Crusaders hung with the Padres and were up 3-0 at half. But the second half was a different story. Two mistakes by Reardon would result in two touchdowns for the Padre Mafia. Junior Brandon Monroe put it out of reach when he took a punt for a 51-yard touchdown. The Pods remain undefeated in the WCAL. Next, St. Ignatius and Sacred Heart Cathedral battled it out at the Bruce Mahoney game. Wildcat QB Ryan Hasfeld completed 16 to 24 passes for 177 yards and accounted for all three touchdowns. And the SI defense handled the rest, shutting out the Fighting Irish the first three quarters and by locking up junior running back Jamar William Shepard with only 62 yards on 23 carries and SHC's only touchdown in the fourth. SHC tried to make a comeback after a Wildcat turnover with less than a minute to play, but senior Eddie Hogan intercepted a Logan White pass to seal the win for SI 20-7. The stage is set for next week's Halloween showdown between the Warboys and the Wildcats. The rivalry is such a special rivalry. The history goes back over 100 years, and it's just, I take so much pride in playing Sacred Heart here, especially at SI. First time in 25 years, a great win. Milpitas continue their domination with their third shutout of the year against Wilcox. Five foot nine running back Cross Chavez may be on the smaller side, but boy did he have the biggest plays. 
scoring a 52-yard run on Milpita's first offensive play and then scored on a 43-yard run right after. Defensive back Christian Rita kicked it into high gear when he scooped up the ball off a surprise punt for a 76-yard return. Final score, 28-0. Trojans remain undefeated as they head into their senior night against Los Gatos Friday night. And of course, we save the best for last. Bellarmine and Mitty under the lights at Robert Bachman Stadium. Well, we just dedicated a beautiful new field. We're very excited about it and got to thank uh, some of the people that really made it possible. So we're looking forward to a great game here tonight. Being the game of the week, you know history had to be made, especially with the dynamic duo Anthony Gudadaro and Kyle McCulley. Gudadaro is now a three-time GSF Game of the Week MVP, finishing the game with 137 yards and a 46-yard touchdown in the fourth. Running back Kyle McCulley was named playmaker of the game with a 68-yard touchdown run and an interception in the fourth quarter. 2017 Bellarmine. The boys in blue are set to take on Reardon Saturday up in the city. Liking what you see? Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and keep your eye out for this week's GSF predictions. I'm Courtney Ponce and this is GSF Weekly.